Welcome to Sepsa Talk. I am Evans Apia Kisi, the host of Sepsa Talk. SEPSA is Center for Better Society Advocacy and Research Africa. SEPSA Africa is a nonprofit organization that believes in a better society for all. We in SEPSA Africa believe that a better society begins with you and I. Hashtag, a better society begins with me. For more information, please log on to SEPSA Africa. At, please log on to www.sepsaafrica.org. Please follow us on the various social media platforms, YouTube, Sepsa Talk, Facebook at Sepsa Africa, Instagram, Sepsa Africa, Twitter at Sepsa Africa. Like always, today we bring you the very first edition of Sepsa Talk for the year 2021. And I'm happy to host the founding president of Sepsa Africa. In this first episode of Sepsa Talk for the year, we host AK Mensa, founding president of Sepsa Africa, to, to cover issues like what is Sepsa Africa, what should the general public expect on Sepsa Talk for this year, 2021, the role of civil society organizations, and the aftermath of Ghana's 2020 elections. And of course, our guest today, Mr. Albert Kobina Mensa, he is the CEO of Sepsa Africa. He's currently a doctoral researcher at Ruha University, Bochum, Germany. He was Master of Science in Water Resources from Kenyatta University, Nairobi, Kenya. Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Sciences from University of Cape Coast, Ghana. His main interest lies in politics, good governance, advocacy, and better society. He has research expertise in soil pollution, soil remediation, environmental sustainability, small-scale mining sustainability. It's always a pleasure to host you Welcome to the first edition of Sepsa Talk for the year 2021, Mr. Albert Kobina Mensa. Thank you so much, uh, thank you so much, Evans. And it's a pleasure being here. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all our listeners and all fellow Sepsarians. And we wish everybody a very happy and successful new year. Great, thank you very much. And um, let me also say that as usual, we are streaming live on Facebook. Those of you who follow AK Mensa and myself and Sepsa Africa, we would like to welcome you to the very first edition of Sepsa Talk for the year 2021. And let me also wish our viewers and our followers a happy new year and a prosperous one. Please continue to remain safe as COVID-19 is still alive. Great. So, Albert, welcome once again to Sepsa Talk. You. Thank you very much, Ivan Zapiakisi. It's a pleasure being here. So, how was it for you? How, how was the Christmas for you before we even start with, with, with a topic of, of today? How did you spend your Christmas? Yeah, my Christmas, of course, we are in Germany and, uh, um, you know, there's COVID-19. There are so many restrictions. You can't even travel. And I mean, even visiting families and staff uh, is not even encouraged. So we had remained quiet um, onto ourselves in our rooms and uh, trying to also finalize some of the papers that I'm, 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 I'm working on for my, for my PhD. Yeah, so basically it's been a slow uh, Christmas, but we are still alive in the midst of COVID-19. We thank God. Great, thank you very much. So let's... Let's zoom straight into the into our discussion for today, where we want to learn more about the organization SEPSA Africa, which has a main program running every now and then, every Saturday. That's the SEPSA talk. And then also to get your views on what 
civil society organizations are and their impact in in the political space in Ghana and of course for 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 the general economic development of of the country so tell us about sepsa africa i mean what does the organization seeks to achieve thank you very much for that question uh sepsa africa the full meaning of sepsa africa is center for better society advocacy and research africa so in short sepsa africa it was founded in 2018 and it's, it's well registered think tank organization in ghana uh, in Sepsa Africa, our major objective um, is to focus on educating and imbibing in citizens' sense of patriotism and also the need for citizens to say no to corruption or stealing in any form what belongs to the, the masses. So, so that is what we do. So we train new crop of leaders who are capable of manning the affairs of Ghana to be specific in Africa in general. It also prepares citizens to become right, apart from preparing citizens to become responsible leaders or to take up responsible, um, to take up responsible leadership position in the future. One thing Africa, Africa had actually forgotten, and that one thing that had not received much attention is that we tend to focus so much at, on, at the leadership on top. Okay, but another group of people we need to engineer is the followership. When the followership is good, then it means we can also build a better society. So in as much as we advocate for good leadership or people at the helm of affairs, we need to also engineer responsible followers of political parties. And in South Africa, we engineer uh, uh, people who become responsible um, followers of political party. We also invite and prepare students in various institutions um, to become judicious use of public funds in student leadership and beyond. So these are these are some of the things that we we actually focus. Um, the issue about our South Africa is that you know to build a better society requires two main two main tenets. Two main te tenets. I I categorize them into what I call the at the macro scale or what is called the at the aggregate scale and what is and what I also categorize as the micro scale. At the macro scale, we look at leadership, the right leadership at the helm of affairs. What Ghana needs, Ghana needs nothing less than the right leadership to change and to steer the affairs of this nation, to carry us into higher heights, to lift our people out of poverty, and to set our people on the path of prosperity. So leadership at the aggregate scale is very important. The other thing that we also need, apart from leadership, is just like I said, responsible followership and responsible followership comes about with citizens with change attitude citizens with right attitude so in sepsa africa we critique leadership at the aggregate level we do not do so because we mean harm we do so because we mean well and we want our nation to do well and we know we can do it so apart from critiquing um, uh, uh, um, policies of of various policies at the, at the leadership level or at the aggregate level. We also look at how we can change citizens or we can breed new crop of citizens with change mentality and citizens who have better society written on their hearts. So we do this by imbibing in them the right to become, the right, the right to choose integrity in their dealings, to become honest in their dealings. Uh, the, um, the, the need to put meritocracy in all what we do and in all what we do, to put humanity topmost priority. When you put humanity topmost priority in the things that you do, you will not work in an institution and steal what belongs to the masses because you have passion for, 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 for humanity. So these are these are some of the things we do in Africa. And in South we, Africa. Yes, these are some of the things we do in South Africa. And since we came, um, I don't know. Okay, probably I'll, I'll be here then. Um, I'll end it here. Then when you ask the previous other questions, I can come up with the answer. All right. All right. The Thank you very much. So, I mean, this is a, which I'm also a part of the organization, I must say. I also double as the director of research. So this has been founded since 2018. It's registered as a think tank in Ghana. And the main vision is to be able to 
you know, not just criticize leadership, but also to prepare citizens that would become responsible follows. So, but you said something that some of the things you do is to train new, new crop of leaders and, and prepare citizens. How do you do that? How do you train? How do you train followers? Do you have an institute somewhere that one can enroll in to be trained in, in order to be a good citizen? Yeah, um, that's a very good question. One of the ways, you know, of training um, people to become good followers of political parties or good followers of politics is our lives. The lives that we live are typical examples to be set first. I have always advocated that we need to practice what we think people are doing not right. Or we need to practice the things that we preach. When you follow me on social media, I'm always critiquing um, issues in Ghana. I don't do that because I hate Ghana, because I love Ghana so much. And I've put Ghana in all the things that I do. I was in Kenya, I did my master's, my master's there. I was doing my PhD in Tanzania. I left, I, I, I came to Germany to continue my PhD. In all my ways, I've put Ghana first. Even my research that I do is born out, 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 out of my passion to see Ghana grow and to see Ghana become better than where, where, where it is now. So that is, that is one. So we do, we do write on social policies, we do write on good governance, leadership, and accountability and stuff in, in, the, in the papers for people to actually follow. And all our writings are available on social media and also on, uh, on, on other media platforms. Then what we also do is that we do uh, public workshops and we do public lectures. We've done quite a couple of public lectures. I know I'll take you through when we get to the achievement or some of the things that we've done. But we also do public lectures um, uh, where, where we, we train this, this, this kind of leaders. We've done public lectures at Viniba. We've done another public lecture at, um, at Cape Coast University. Yeah. And, 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 and also through community debate, scientization, and, 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 and other things. Mm. Thank you very much. You, you said something that I just wanted to follow up because these days I hear a lot of people talk about the need to put Ghana first. I mean, I'm sure we'll come to a question. I'll ask you about your thoughts on the aftermath of our elections and what has transpired in, in, in Ghana's parliament. But when you say to put Ghana first, what, what exactly do you mean? Because you say throughout your life, in your writings, in your advocacies, you have always sought to put Ghana first. What do you mean by that? You know, I'm a Ghanaian by birth. I'm, I'm a Ghanaian by advocate. I am a Ghanaian by blood. I am a Ghanaian in all ways. I love Ghana. I love everything Ghana. Ghana food, Ghana music. You, you know, when you, people who are close to me will, will come to know that I'm really a local person because I always play Ghana music. You know, even when I was doing my, my, my master's in Nairobi, I was always playing Ghana music. I love everything Ghana. So that is why I'm saying that our lives should actually be an example for people to emulate. emulate. If you say we put Ghana first. Now, why do, what do I mean by putting Ghana first? In our dealings, in my research career, I had written a number of papers on environmental pollution, on, on, on environmental sustainability. And in all these papers that I write, it is all about Ghana. So my research capabilities or my research acumen is not to train me to give it to another country elsewhere, but how I'll be able to use the knowledge of acquired to turn the affairs or to change narratives in my country. But, so that is actually an ethical example of putting Ghana, 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 Ghana first, you know? And when you put Ghana first, you are a minister, you've been given a position, you are an MP, you are a, a head of an institution. When you put Ghana first in your, in your dealings, let's say you've been put in charge of taking care of road. Now, when you put Ghana first, it is not, you, you are not going to put yourself, your self-interest, you know, in Ghana, we have had people who have become private citizens. When you say people are private citizens, these are people who, who man public institutions and they seek their private interest. You know, when you seek your private interest, when you, you are a public servant, then you are not putting Ghana, Ghana first because you are putting your, yourself first. So you mm -hmm. are a minister, 
you've been put in charge of road construction, you're a contractor and whatsoever, you're going to construct a road, or you're going to construct some road at a place. When you put Ghana first, you think about the lives of the people when you take bribe or when you take corruption. Because you take corruption, the road, the road will, not be, will not be constructed sustainably. We construct a mm -hmm. road two or three years, the road is denatured. And when um, the road starts to become, uh, uh, there are portals and stuff, and now people are going to die because the road was not fixed well. When you put Ghana first, a police will not stand by the roadside and take bribe to compromise what is good. Mm. Because you have become a private citizen where you put yourself first at the, at, at the detriment of the state. But mm. when you take a bribe as a policeman, when the person or the driver has no required license to travel on the road, and you take bribe to allow him to go, my brother, look at the consequences ahead of time. You mm. are asking him to go and kill the people. Exactly. When you put Ghana first, when you are construct when, 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 when you are a contractor or when you are a building a contractor and whatsoever, and you are put you are putting up schools, you not put any any dilapidated structure for the for the for the case because because you just do something to get your money and just go away. But you think about the future generation. That is by putting Ghana first. Kwame Nkrumah put Ghana first in all what he does. That is why Kwame Nkrumah, at this time, he was living so many years ahead of his colleagues. Kwame Nkrumah was living like 100 years ahead of his colleagues. And if you mm. see the project that Kwame Nkrumah did, most of the project that Kwame Nkrumah did are the projects that we are, me and you, we, we, we are benefiting from. Kwame Nkrumah constructed the Cape Coast University. He engineered the construction of Kwame Nkrumah University mm. and Science and Technology. Definitely. If we want to talk about Kwame Nkrumah, I guess we would... <laughs> We would have to look for you know another date at which I would be interested to host you on that. So I, in the nutshell, Evans, in the nutshell, so Kwame Nkrumah is a typical example of a nationalist because he did put Ghana first. And I am a nationalist in all what I do. So these are typical traits of people or, 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 or things that someone does to be classified as one who put Ghana topmost mm. priority in his, in his or her dealings. Mm, thank you very much. So basically, to put Ghana first means to have the interest of the country at topmost priority. So that with the example that Albert gave, if you are a minister of roads and highways, you would not cut corners. You would follow due diligence to be able to put up a better road that will serve the needs of, of, of the people. So that is it. We need to put Ghana first. And that's exactly what we do here on SEPSA Talk, that the interest of the country is what is important. I also only wanted to chip in that, well, with your example of doing research with a focus on Ghana, I, I know this can be debated, but just for viewers not to take it out of you know proportion that it does not also mean that if your research focus as a Ghanaian is in another country, you do not have the, the interest of the- Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's a very good um, yes. caveat you have also put there. Yeah, 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 to, I, yeah definitely. Yeah. Just that's, to chip in that, though Albert, I know he's very, passionate about Ghana. So that's that's great. And so what's the unique, I mean, I'm sure you have said that, but maybe I want to ask you so that if you want to repeat it again, what's the unique selling proposition of the organization of SEPSA Africa? What would you describe as something that is unique in comparison to other CSOs in Ghana? I, I, I know many CSOs work on corruption, but the other thing that SEPSA Africa does we highlight corruption, then we highlight the very basic problem that confronts us as people. And they need to engineer our homegrown solution to dealing with the problem first. Mm. So it is not rocket science. It is not soil chemistry. It is just about, it is just about highlighting our very own problem that we face, basic problem. You know, Ghana's problems are not much. Ghana's problems are basic. You know why? Because Evans, we have not even finished solving the fundamentals of society. When you go to many, many, many areas in Ghana, access to regular supply of water is a major problem. This, this is something many communities have, many countries have passed their long time. But we are now trying to extend borehole to reach, to reach communities. More than 60% of Ghana's water resources is, is degraded or is polluted. And in Ghana, People cannot even boast of, I mean, going to uh, uh, fetch water from a, from a tap and just drink it because you are going to invite for yourself, I mean, health risk. You understand? So yeah. we just highlight our basic problems that we are facing 
and to re-engineer our own homegrown solutions. What do, what do I mean by homegrown solutions? We ourselves, by changing our attitude, by choosing the right, leader, the right leadership at the helm of affairs, nobody will do it for us. So, this, so South Africa, these are the things we do. We, 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 we are not so um, extraordinary people. We are just a group of people who mean well for the society. And we don't only mean for well for, our, well for ourselves, we mean well for the greater good of the society. Because most of the things that we are doing here, Evans, if it is about us, then we are okay. We, we, we are, at the end of the day, we're going to have our PhD. We, we are better off, we are fine. Is it our scholarship? We've gotten it. Is it our travel experience? We've gotten it. So we are okay. But why do we do the things that we do? We do it because we, we, we mean well for the, for the generations that are coming. And most of the things that we do preach, even if we do not, we do not encounter it at our time, the generations ahead will, will benefit and they will inherit a Ghana that is, that is better than the one that we, 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 we saw. So hmm. it is not rocket science or soil chemistry. It, right. it is just about, about, about highlighting the, the, our very own problems and re-engineering or by recalculating our steps in, 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 in finding solutions to, to, to our problems. Thank you. That's a, a great one there. So basically the unique selling proposition of this organization is to highlight you know, fundamental problems of society and then also not just highlighting them, but also to point out you know, homegrown solutions to some of these problems. Thank you very much. So what would you say are some of the major achievements that, that the organization uh, has achieved in the past years? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, uh, mostly, um, just like we, we, we do advocate, we, are, we, are, we, we, live, we live by examples, the things that we preach. I'm, I'm a typical example. If anyone who encounters me, you see that I'm someone who does not bend. I don't bend, or it's not because I'm rigid or something, but I, I don't bend. And it, because I've set some target for myself and I, I have put national interest first. So some of the achievements that we have made, we have focused on public lectures. In 2017, we did a public lecture at the University of Education, Winneba. We spoke to not less than 150 students. We taught them basic skills of good governance, leadership, and how they could demand accountability and transparency from, from leadership. So that is one we did in 2000, in 2000, that was 2018. In 2019, we did another public lecture with um, the former uh, independent presidential candidate, Marie Kofigani, um, at the University of Education. And he taught the student also about, about some of the things that I had highlighted previously. He, he, he taught them about the tenant of building a better society. And that particular public lecture hosted not less than um, 100 students from the University of Education, Winneba. And in, 2020, in 2020, we also held a public lecture with Dr. Abu Sakara, um, who is the head of, excuse me, the head of the National Interest Movement. And we did it at the University of Cape Coast on the 20th of February, 2020. And Dr. Abu Sakara, in that particular workshop, we called for re reforms, existing reforms in, 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 in our Ghanaian politics in order to harness the potential that democracy actually um, um, presents to, to the people. So these are some of the achievements that we have, we have actually made. And uh, mm. um, in, 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 in 2000 and, was it 2020, uh, that was 2019, yeah, 2019. 2019, we also, we, 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 as part of our community outreach, we were at Ejura together with CCR Foundation and Rural Smart, uh, Rural, Rural Smart Fund Foundation. And we, uh, our, our Ashanti Regional Rep, who happens to be Mr. Isaac Owusu, a free year, uh, donated, donated books to, or chemistry books that he self authored to the students. So we don't we don't only only do advocacy, but we also we also reach out to the vulnerables in society. You know, one of the major problems um, facing senior high schools is access to test, test books. And this month we we donated more than more than more than 15 of these test books to the to, to the Ejura Senior High School. 
So these are some of the achievements that we can be proud of, of, of ourselves mm -hmm. that as an organization that we have done. We have also, we have also stimulated discussions on national issues through our CEPSA talk mm. and uh, through our, our, our advocacies. Mm. I know we're going to talk about CEPSA talk, so, so these are some of the, um, and th these are some of the achievements that we have, we have made. We are changing lives and narratives. Mm. We, we, are, we, are, we are shifting paradigms. And I, know, I, know, I know you also, you once led um, you know, the extension of the Ghanaian passport. I, yes, I, I don't know yes. whether it was done by CEPSA or you did it in your capacity just as yes so the so the, the extension of the Ghanaian passport um i started um i started with the advocacy just like i have been vigorously writing on on issues for paradigm shift so i i put on my platform the need to extend the the validity of the Ghanaian passport from from five years to to ten years so so i had i had i had, I had, I had mm. one of the, of the followers he wrote to me and he said senior can we can we take this thing up? I want us to write a petition. So we wrote a petition, and when we wrote the petition, the petition received not less than fifteen thousand signatures across the globe, calling for the extension of the validity of the Ghanaian passport from five years to ten years. And we got a positive affirmation on that. We got a positive feedback. Absolutely. So this are, so we are changing lives and narratives. We we are not people who just talk. We walk the talk, and we we are practical examples of the things that we do talk about. All right, so tell us, you mentioned SEPSA talk and like you rightly put, what, what should the general public expect? I mean, there are a few people who loved, you know, the discussions on, on SEPSA talk last year. What should they expect this year? Yeah, so SEPSA talk is, is an online program that we came up with as part of our advocacy, especially when we were hit by COVID-19 now traveling became a problem and how to reach people became a problem. So people were moving virtually everything, everything online or virtually. So we decided to also, we're thinking of ways we can reach to people, can reach out to people uh, despite the fact that we are staying at homes and we are not able to go out. So we came up with SEPSA Talk. SEPSA Talk is an online um, educative platform which we are doing today that highlights the problems that we have in, in our country and um, and it involves uh, it involves uh, a host which happens to be yourself, Ivan Sapia Kisi, and uh, and, a, a ho and a list of guests, uh, usually two, three, or four, 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 four guests, and we discuss and profile solution to national issues. And on SEPSA Talk, we put Ghana topmost priority because we are in charge of SEPSA Talk, and SEPSA Talk is not a talk; it's not your usual talk of politicking of issues where we put MPP right, NDC left, and it's about, it's about I mean, um, uh, playing um, everything, every national issue in the, in the political arena on the wings of two, two political parties. On SEPSA talk, we discuss issues as they are from professional point of view. And the, the people who have appeared on our show are people who are highly professionals in the various sectors. Mm. So we did talk about political tribalism last year, we did talk about small scale mining. We did talk about mining, whether it is a blessing or a curse, or on how we can turn the curse around to benefit our people. We did talk about gender and development, and and there, are, there are, all these are solutions that can change our lives and can lift our people out of poverty and set our people on the path of prosperity. Then, before the elections, I will end here. We came up with what is called the interrogating the manifestos. So, with interrogating the manifestos, um, what we did was that. Um, we, we analyze the content or the policies that have been outlined in the various political parties manifestos for the Ghana's election 2020. And we analyze the various sectors from agriculture to the economy, to, to gender, to social protection, to social development, and, and a whole lot. And we, we came up with various solutions that, that the electorate could consider before they cast their vote for a political party. Mm. So mm. these are some of the things that we did with SEPSA talk. Then going forward, the people, the people or our, our audience should expect more interesting episodes, more interesting episodes. And on SEPSA talk, like I will reiterate that we put Ghana topmost priority. It's not your usual um, MPP NDC political arena. So people should expect more this year on, on, on Ghana's election, election reforms. We can see that our elections have a lot of portals that we need to we need to see if we want to actually go forward uh, and build our democracy. 
so we should expect also more this year on COVID-19 because COVID-19 is really a topical issue. All of us are, 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 are indoor. In Germany, we've been on a lockdown and um, they are trying to, they are planning of extending it. And so COVID-19 protocols and measures we will try to educate the people more. We'll talk about corruption. We also border on science and technology. We will discuss research for nation building. We will also discuss how Ghana, how we want to see the future of Ghana in say 100 years time, in 37 years, uh, let me say 36 years to come. Mm. Because Ghana, Ghana has a policy called the Ghana at 100. That is, they envisage that Ghana by 2057 will become a first world nation. When we say first world nation, it means it's a top class road, 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 road network. You know, then you are talking about water access to every individual, non interrupted. Okay, there's, there's regular access to everybody, mm. everybody, uh, especially in terms of water, electricity, we've gotten it checked. In terms of our energy, we've gotten it checked. In terms of our football or, or our creative art, everything is gotten checked. But we're talking about first world nation. And we cannot achieve this by folding our arms and lying on bed. We can achieve this by pragmatic leadership on, on, at the top of affairs and by, by action action-oriented people, not people who just talk the talk and they never walk the talk. Mm. So these are some of the things that we intend to do with SEPSA Talk this particular and, year and beyond. And like we've been doing in the past, and you rightly also said that, you know, one of our core aim is, is not only to criticize leaders, but also to churn out, you know, responsible followers who are able to you know, produce a better society. Most of our discussions will center on both the leader and the follower. And so yeah. viewers, watch out for SEPSA talk this year. So thank you very much, Mr. Albert Kobina Mensa. Let me read a few messages here and I'll come back to you to ask you a few questions about civil society groups in which SEPSA Africa is part and what you think the climate looks like for civil society groups and their impact on Ghana's political space and governance. So a message here from Jesse and Proko says, Happy New Year, SEPSA officials. Proko see Pai Pai, Drama Lab, he says, exactly that's the love. If we get leaders that truly love the people, most of our problems would be solved. He goes on to say, I'm suggesting that you decentralize the activities of SEPSA, resource the university students, and let us prosecute the agenda. Eric Osu Dallison says, Thank you, Presido. And then Eli and Bavo says, thank you, great job. But before I come to the CEO, uh, before I come to, to you on, on the issue of CSOs, what's your take on I, what Parkwesi said? Uh, do you, what's, the, what's the situation now? Because he's calling for a decentralization of your organization, resource the university students so that they will be able to execute some of these agenda. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a very one from Pakwesi. Pakwesi is, is an astute follower of, of mine, and and actually that is what we intend to do with SEPSA Africa. When we came up with the framework for SEPSA Africa, that was our plan. Our plan, our plan, our original plan, is huge, you know. But we are really incapacitated, and we are really challenged with funding. We have we we have not had funding for most of the things that we do. All the things that we've done are things that have come from our own pocket. Everything you see, including uh, hosting SEPSA Talk on, on, on YouTube and also uh, hosting SEPSA Talk on, on Facebook, everything has been come from our pocket. But that has been our major challenge. And also because most of the people who work with SEPSA Africa, uh, they do it voluntarily. They are professionals committed to their various jurisdictions. So um, it's voluntary, you know, they are not paid. So sometimes there's some kind of like a bit of, I mean, you understand what I mean? So, yeah. so but but originally we have engineered that um, we will set up a, 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 a SEPSA club in all senior high schools in the country, in, 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 in pre-tertiary institutions. And my vice president, Eric Ousu Dalinsen, actually wrote a letter to the GES when, when we started. He wrote a letter to the GES, I mean, uh, asking for, for permission for us to set up, to set up um, um, clubs because we think that we had failed. And I know we're going to talk about that. We think that we had failed and we, the Ghana, we deserve better than what we are getting, but we didn't get. So we think that we are not selfish. If we could not get, at least the, the younger ones coming could be different. 
even when we are dead and go and, and gone, they could inherit a, a better Ghana. I mean, for 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 themselves and their and their generations. So, we actually intended to train people right from the primary school. You know, because the the, the old ones are already already rot. They are already rotten. So we think that the best way to turn the nation around, the best way to turn to 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 to, to actually put us on the path of right is to target the younger generation, the, the small, small ones. Because the Bible even says that train up the child the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. So that's, our main Proverbs, target... that's Proverbs 22, verse 6. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so, so our main target was, to, was, was on the younger generation because we think that when they are able to imbibe the message of a better society, they grow up with it. And when they grow up with it, it will stay with them. It is very difficult for you to... You know, we are Ghanaians, and no matter where we travel to, we have never shied away from eating our own food because culture is strong, mm. you know? So yeah. that is the same way I wanted us to build these children, this, this, this kids who are coming, so that they'll be, I use the word on the positive side, they'll be, they'll be specifically inoculated and indoctrinated with policies, with good governance, and with, with better society written on their hearts. They'll be mm. indoctrinated. We need to inoculate and indoctrinate the children with tenets of better society. And perhaps intoxicate them as well. They should just get drunk with, you know, issues of better society. Issues of better society. So that was our plan. So we, we have the framework there and we have clubs at the, at the universities. We, we, we had one club at the University of Education. We also have a club highly registered also at the University of Cape Coast, Ghana. And uh, so our plan is to upscale the proliferation of these clubs to to the various yeah. um, schools I, across the country. I, I think it's a it's a brilliant idea, and I'm sure we would have a discussion on this. You know how to move this agenda forward because it looks very good. If we should have a club like that, I don't know how we intend to call it. Maybe you know the club of responsible citizens, something that trains and imbibes into these kids. You know issues of of responsible behavior. Thank you very much. That. Uh, Albert on that. So let me come to you. We don't have enough time and I really want to also spend some 10 to 15 minutes with you on the aftermath of Ghana's elections. I know you've written a number of pieces on Facebook that I would want us to pick it up. So maybe just five minutes, I want us to talk about, you know, civil society organizations in Ghana. At the moment, how do you see civil society groups in Ghana? We know there are a lot Last, I was listening to the news from Joy, and just in the educational sector alone, there are more than 1,000 CSOs. I mean, that, that, there's an issue going on, you know, trying to, uh, anyway, I don't want us to go into that issue. But what's your take on CSOs in Ghana, particularly their role in shaping, you know, the governance system? And do you think that they are giving the necessary space to operate? Um, Evans. CSOs count. You know, a country without CSOs is like a child without a mother. Mm. A country without CSOs is like a home without a father. Mm. A country without CSO or without CSOs is like a nation or a society without a policeman. Okay? Mm. So if there's no policeman, who checks you to do what is right? You know, governance is not a sole proprietorship. It is a collective interest of everybody and all ideas, complaints, and uh, uh, suggestions, positive or negative, do matter. There's something I classify as DAD, D-A-D. Decide. The D stands for decide. Mm -hmm. The A stands for announce. Mm -hmm. And the D stands for defend. That is what government do. Government sits without the involvement of the people of, the, of various stakeholders, they sit and they decide. When they decide, they will come and announce to the people. Announce. Yes, yeah, yeah, they will announce to the people their policies that they have decided. You know, it, and you, you can liken it to what is happening in Ghana. Then they will line up communicators to defend. So they decide, they announce, and they defend it. You know, be almost your own penny because I know what I'm say. That is what they, that is the stand they are taking. In the voice of Daddy Lumba, Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, and it, you know, though it sounds jovial, it sounds light, but it had happened in the country before where we, we had a leader saying, we, we don't want to listen, mm. okay? 
whatever you say. So that is the that is what is called the defend, announce, and they decide, right. announce, and defend. Yeah. So it is the duty of CSOs to check some of these things. No, look, CSOs do matter. They play a role. Look, mm. in a society, everybody matters. Governance. Governance is not something that, some, you know, we elect, we elect leaders. You know, in, in Africa, or let me talk about Ghana, we elect leaders and the leaders become, become demigods. Mm. But the question is, you elected a leader. You elected someone, you give someone a job. The person is, at your, is your employee, you are the employer. Then the person now becomes more powerful than you. Mm. You know, the person becomes more powerful than you. At the end of the day, your road is still bad, the water is still polluted, okay? And when you talk about it, they want to kill you. Meanwhile, when there was time for voting, ballot box, that ballot box reached all corners of the country. Every corner, there was a ballot box for people to come and cast votes. But then when they finish voting, your, 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 your opinions and your suggestions are noise to them. So CSOs, CSOs, whether, whatever complaints they come up with, whatever complaints, whether negative or positive, should be taken. Should be taken. Even sometimes when they say something negative, we can, we can harness the positive of the negatives. Mm -hmm. OK. So for instance, let me give you in the fight against corruption, South Africa with our advocacy. Look at the thing that we do. We are all busy, extremely busy people. If you want to come across someone who is extremely busy, busy then it's me. I am always busy because I have so many things to do. But we create time to do the things that we do in order to conscientize the people for a better society. So CSOs count. We talk about people like the CDD, the things that Imani Africa is doing. Now, even when you read the Transparency International Report, the Corruption Perception Index Report every year, mm. it reports that those countries that perform better or score higher are those countries where there's higher or there's higher, <clears throat> there's better or there are more or higher survival or where CSOs are really accepted. Mm. You know, if you go to countries like Somalia, Sudan, other countries, those are countries which are mostly found at the bottom of the corruption perception index ranking. Countries like Mauritius, countries like Kved, countries like um, even Senegal at a point in time, countries like um, Rwanda, especially countries in East Africa, they are doing very well. And when you go there, it is because they have a vibrant civil society organization. When the Japan deal came, if it, if it were not for civil society organizations, the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian who lives at the village wouldn't have heard about it. They would have passed the Japan deal without actually listening to anybody with their decide, announce, and defend criteria that most gov government do. So the CSOs represent the voices of the unheard. They probe into deals and put national interest first also so that policy projects, policies and projects of government initiatives will benefit the poor. But look at what happened. At the end of the day, the Japan deal is still hanging. I am hearing of it coming to, into parliament again. We should thank CSOs. If it were not for CSOs, CSOs do not claim to know it all. We mm. never, look, I'm, I'm a soil remediation scientist. I'm an environmental sustainability enthusiast. Okay. And there are certain things I don't delve into it. I don't claim to know it all. You know, what I know and what I think can build a society, that is what CSOs do. When, when government, uh, I'll end here, when parliament wanted to expand chamber, but look, my brother, the water pollution in Pristia, the extent of environmental degradation in Obuasi, okay, then many people in northern part of the country who do not have access to potable water, okay, mm. that many people actually are denied of basic services. I was watching a TV, a, a, a new news on, on city TV, and there's a community. There's a community where they don't have access to road. The, the community people themselves came together to build their road. When you ask them, you know what they said? They said they don't know of any government. The government has failed them. Mm. So they are going to take their own law, their own, uh, their own life into their hands and build their communities. 
CSOs highlight some of these things. Parliament wanted to expand chamber to accommodate more people. Who does that? But CSOs rose against it and it was dropped. Mm. So without CSOs, you can you can imagine. That is why I said a society without CSO is like a, a, a nation without CSO. It's like a it's like a nation or a society without the police, or it's like a child without a mother. Imagine mm -hmm. if a child has no mother. My brother, you'll be very much hungry. You go you go to bed, you go to bed, you know, deprived of mm. food. So CSOs do matter, and every CSO, regardless of uh, regardless of their of their weaknesses they do count towards building a model better society for the people mm, thank you very much i wanted to um ask a follow-up but we don't have much time but at least just one i mean so thank you cso's really matter and i like what you said and to reiterate that a nation that does not have cso's is like a nation without the police service or it's like a child without the mother and the father I, I would put both together so it's like a child without parents it's just like an orphan and you know how orphans are yeah we'll but, it. but you like you said i mean you said something that even if cso's are being negative you know at least something positive could come out of their negative energy and it's also some of the principles that i, I carry along regardless of whatever happens one can always find some positive you know, energy in it. But then do you think that should also be the tangent? What what would you say or what would be your advice for CSOs? Do we need CSOs that that are objective or we need CSOs that are just for the stomach? Because if you have a lot of CSOs who are also biased and are not doing their work well, then you, you're probably better off without a CSO. So that I would say if you would have a bad or if you would have bad parents, like we said, a nation without the CSO is like a child without parents. If you have bad parents who are not training you very well, who are not guiding you to do the right things, then you are as well better off without parents. And so what would you say would be the things that are expected of CSOs in just a minute or two, so that we know that how, how can one tell that these CSOs are indeed the main business and they are not just in, you know, for their own interest. Like you rightly said, we should always put Ghana first. And I know definitely you would say CSOs, one of their main aim should be to put Ghana first. And then of course, also to be able to remain objective. What do you expect CSOs in Ghana to be doing in order to you know, help address the many issues that, that they are currently addressing? Consistency. Mm. Consistency. You know, you want to know someone's love for something? Consistency. How do you differentiate a fake one from a real one? Consistency. Because if something is fake, it cannot be done repeated or, or, or uh, in, it, it cannot be done iteratively. C certainly, the person who gets it will branch at a point in time. But when someone is really consistent with something, when they be ah say an the person is the person knows what he's doing. CSO should remain on board. And if you want to see a real CSO from from the non or from the non real CSOs, then it's, it's about it's about consistency. If you see many CSOs, you can you can tell the 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 the, the, the tree by the fruit. Mm. You know, it's about consistency. It's not it's not. I mean, you have to remain politically non-colored, or you have to remain politically decolorized, because many many CSOs some at at a point in time because of you know financial issues and you know all that you know it's not easy it's not easy so at a point in time they tend to um get themselves bought and uh they they do the bidding of 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 of, of, of government but mm. if cso's do bidding of government then then what happens what is what happens to the society you know so it's, it's about consistency and it's about remaining resolute to the things they are committed to 
All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a brilliant one there. So consistency is key. I mean, if it is black, it is black. If it is white, it is white, regardless of whoever is in charge. That's what we expect of CSOs and they should remain unbought. Now we have just about five to 10 minutes to wrap up the show. I'm really enjoying it. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. Now let's talk about the aftermath of Ghana's elections. For you, what would you pick as your highs and your lows? And then we have a conversation around that. In the, first place, your highs. in the first place, my highs is on the side of Ghanaians. My highs is kudos to Ghanaians. Ghanaians had voted. I had voted, if I had voted for this time, it would have been my fifth time in the fourth republic that I voted out of the eight. But kudos to Ghanaians, we had voted, you know? What do you mean by we had voted? We always vote. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are two abanka, sir. You are two. <laughs> you are two aban. Okay. We have, we, have told, we have shown the politician that we cannot go on with business as usual politics. Citizens are no fools. That when it is green, you come and tell them it is red. They will tell you, okay, you say, you say it is red, right? Okay. Four years will come. So the, the aftermath of the 2020 elections have shown us that has shown us that Ghanaians cannot be taken for granted. Issues do matter to Ghanaians. So you cannot tell me that there are certain issues we pay attention to, but there are certain issues that we brush aside because a Ghanaian has short memory. A Ghanaian has no short memory. A Ghanaian remembers. So my high, my highs have been on the side of the Ghanaian. Your lows, or lows. You know, you know the loss, the loss of more than thirty parliamentarians for MPP tell that Ghanaians were not happy with the with the leadership of the of, of NDC of MPP. It, it tells that Ghanaians were not happy with the leadership of MPP, because if Ghanaians were happy with the leadership of MPP, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have witnessed this. Mortality, this so, fatal, this fatalities. So they were not happy with the NPP parliamentarians. You mean they were not happy with the parliamentarians? With they were not happy with with many of the national policies of, of, of the of the ruling government mm. because actually NPP nearly lost. Actually, it's my opinion. If someone does not agree with me, I also understand that he does not agree with me. But this is my opinion. My opinion is that they Ghanian, nearly lost. They nearly, yeah, the MPP nearly lost. I mean, you cannot, you cannot be this fatal in a fight. Then you say I won after you've been, you, you've had your noses, your your uh, your noses, your eyes, everything bruising of uh, oozing of of blood. That is what happened to NPP. They are, they, they struggled. They struggled to win votes. That is to tell. That is to tell every government that. Look, you know, MPP thought that because of the free SHS, they were going to have things easy because free SHS was highly sensational, you know, and that issues of corruption does not matter. When the Japan did came, uh, uh, Martin Amidu did the corruption perception, corruption risk assessment, it does not matter. It is free SHS. We are talking about uh, uh, sending military to Galamse site to confiscate equipment and to arrest uh, people who are engaged in small scale mining, you say it does not matter. There's free SHS. You know, this election showed that Ghanaians voted based on the issues affecting them. Mm. I come from a mining community. I look at my life, how the policies stimulated by the ruling government affected positively or negatively my life. And if affected more negative than positive, I vote against you. So, Ghanaians really did vote. My another, uh, my another law for this year's election is the issue of election violence on the day of the elections and post-election violence. Mm. You know, there is no way someone, a single soul, hum humans are not animals. We are talking about humans. Evans, when we are going to elect our leaders, nobody should die. Nobody should die to give someone a job. I agree. 
absolutely none should die. Any election that is characterized by, by violence cannot be said to be flawless. A flawless election is one that is free of violence, that is free of intimidation. So this election cannot be said to be flawless. There are so many issues surrounding this particular election. Eight people died. I miss calls being, in, be, being sent to hospital, hospital and brutalized. Eight people died. Nobody should die in choosing our leaders. And I think that, in my opinion, our Ghanaian democracy, which is 20, almost 30 years, had not grown. In my opinion, it was, to, 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 to summarize, I would say that Ghana's democracy had not grown. People would be like, oh, we have been able to make some progress. It is okay, even in America, this is what is happening. Ghana is not America. In society, we don't borrow what is bad, we borrow what is good from another culture and we plant it in, in, into ours. Our, our, our democracy, which is almost 30 years, had not grown. I, will, I argue that our democracy is sinking. Why do I say this? Even those women and the guys, those young girls and the young guys who were born in 1992, by now, most of them are married. They, some, most of them have kids, right? Mm. So it means that even children are growing. But the question we ask is that, is, the Ghana, is Ghana democracy grow, growing linearly with those people who are growing? Because if Ghana democracy were to be a girl, by now, it would have turned into a woman and would have, would have been married or would have been producing kids. Likewise, if it happened to be a man. But ours is not growing. The fact that we still want to cheat in elections, the fact that we still snatch ballot papers, the fact that we still print fake ballots, the fact that we still want to do double voting, all these facts point to the fact that we are not growing. In, the, in, in this world, we grow. In mm. this world, we don't go back, we grow. So if a child does not grow, it means that the child is malnourished and it should be checked. Ghana democracy is malnourished and should be fed. And in this case, I guess um, it's the, the, the point is to all the political parties because you, the if you talk the about- parties Because even you cannot run elections when after declaring of the, of the results, people, people, are, people, people do not agree, you know? This, there are so many. No, I think I think people not agreeing is as a bit as normal. I mean, I think that's why there are institutions put in place. If not, then we will not set the court and other institutions to deal with some of these things. I think for people to disagree is okay. We agree to disagree, like you know, in conflict resolution and and the stuffs like that. So for people to disagree, I think this is welcome. Even in the US, you don't want us to do that, but. Even in the US, people disagree. Even in Germany here, people disagree to some elections. Yes. So people, so the fact that people disagree tells that, okay, the grievances matter. You know, the, really? problem, uh, the problem that we have as a society in Ghana is that, you know, you know President John Mahama does not agree with the results of the, the results of the elections. Okay. And there are so many protests. I am highly against protests. I am highly against vandalism. I am highly against violence. But the problem I think Ghana is having is that we are seeing the problem to be an NDC's problem. The pro I don't support an NDC. I don't support either MPP. I support Ghana. But the problem we are seeing is instead of, it, instead of us to see it as, as a Ghana step problem. to rectify the wrongs, to rectify the mistakes for the betterment of our democracy, we are seeing it as the problem of M NDC and that on TSC, Uncle Court, that is very unfortunate. On TSC, you have to say you can't say many years because of your mind, but... But, but where, where, where can we settle that if not the court? The, the, of course, of course, of course. It, the, 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 there are institutions, of course, the court. Okay, but the point is that, the point I'm trying to make in summary is that we should not see it as an NDC's problem. Absolutely. We should see it as a blot on our democracy. Mm. The fact that people died, the fact that so many of the seats are still under contention, 
We never experienced this in 2016 election. It was so peaceful and so calm. And even that time, we changed an incumbent president with so much ease. How come that we came four years ahead, we retrogressed, we went back? And so many of the seats are still under contention and under dispute. Absolutely. You know, so instead of us to relegate the issue to the background, okay, treating it as, as an NDC problem, let us treat it as a national problem and see how these gaps and the portals and the, and the issues that are raised by the opponent can be addressed for the betterment of our democracy. I end on the last one, what happened in parliament when we were choosing, when we we're going to um, elect, um, swear in the parliamentarians and choose our leader. It was very unfortunate. I call it the dark day, the dark day in Ghana's democracy. Mm. Because we have, we, we have, we have, we have leaders, MP elect snatching ballot boxes, kicking ballot boxes. I think this should be left for the full soldiers. Evans, elections, democracy, it's not, it's not about competition of fist, what we saw in parliament. And people were kicking against themselves. This is happening, this should be happening. Instead of them to do this, we should harness this potential so that they become boxers, so that they can fight for the nation, you know? But they, are, but, they, but they are beating themselves. They are pointing each other. It's a blot on a democracy. Democracy is not a competition of fists. Democracy is a competition of minds. It's a competition of ideas. It's a competition of policies. So but any I democracy... I also think, I also think that... Democracy, any democracy... I just wanted to also chip in that, like you also said. I mean, yes, it was really a dark day in our democracy what happened. But I think if you also watch their conduct this Friday when they had sit him for the first time, it tells you that probably they have moved on. And like you said, even if CSOs are negative, we should also look for certain positives in some of these things. And I think as a nation, it, it's, it's rather unfortunate it happened the way it did, but we can forgive our honorable men. And I'm hopeful that they will do a great job for this uh, eighth parliament. Thank you very much, Albert Kovna Mensa. Unfortunately, time would not allow us to continue. I know there are more, more that you want to say. So let me read my last message. Two more messages. One from Yabua Solomon says, Chairman on, and one from my own love, Christ. Um, Nana Ifiatra says, Great to have you on our screens again. Hashtag Better Society for our long live SEPSA in Africa. Thank you very much, our viewers and our followers. Those of you who sent in messages, we are grateful. Do make a time with us again next week. Albert, how is it going to be like next week? Are we back here or next two I'll, weeks? I, we'll be back in, the, in two weeks' time. time. So do make a yeah. date with us next two weeks as we bring you an interesting discussion. Please watch us this year. As the founding president has said, it is our duty to look at how not to only shape our leaders, but most importantly, to shape our citizens, the followers, like the bottom-up approach. It is our aim that we would raise young people who understand better society, who understand a society of free corruption and who are you know, willing to live a responsible life. Thank you all very much. This has been the first edition of SEPSA Talk and I hosted uh, AK Mensa and the founding president of SEPS Africa. Thank you very much, Albert. Thank you. I am Evans Apia Kisi. Thank you all and see you next two weeks. Have a Thank lovely. you so much, Evans. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Have a lovely evening, lovely morning, lovely afternoon, wherever you are. And then catch you next two weeks. Bye bye.